All right, let's jump over to our man Teddy Cakes at every trading day, folks. You can reach Teddy at forex-trading-unlock.com. We talk to Teddy about the Forex market every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. Teddy Kegstat, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. So, where do we start, man? We've had quite a run in oil this week. I'm always mm -hmm. thinking about you as I see those crude prices climbing ever higher. We almost made it to $80 in the overnight session on light sweet right. crude. Why don't maybe we start there so we don't rush that conversation at the end of this uh, talk? Because, mm -hmm. man, this market has been on fire recently, Keddy. And to your credit, you've been, you've been pumping it for $100. And it seems like <laughs> it's a one-way ship upward right now. What are, what are you looking at in that crude contract? Well, I'm looking for it to follow through, and I think it's going to have a ripple effect into multiple markets, you know. So I think it's going to hit everything from the S&Ps to the interest rate markets to, you know, the currency markets as well, especially the, the, the currencies that are balanced off of oil, you know, whether they're oil rich or oil poor, you know. So I well, think it's definitely going to be rocking things. And why don't, could you just jump into those countries in particular? I know we talk about sure. it often, but we're always getting new listeners when you say those countries, you know, whether you're producers or consumers. Uh, mm -hmm. So we got crude rocking higher. Where do you go in your head from you take crude higher to what currencies do you look for that that's going to have an impact on the most uh, as okay. crude? I, I agree. It's just a, a huge influence across the board right now, which is why I ask. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Well, here's, here's the way I look this, at this scenario panning out. As oil gets above $80, we already know that there's a threshold in the economy. This is pre-pandemic, you know. This is when the economy was much smaller than it is now also, okay. So when oil gets above 80 and starts to maintain that, let alone get to 100 or more, we know that there's going to be a lot of dynamics to start to change. Now, the last time oil got, above, got to 100 or above, you got to realize we didn't have the inflation that we have right now. OK, so that's a huge, huge deal. It's going to make the amp the, the oil rally now. The amplification of its ramifications is going to be exponential compared to what it was, say, back during the Bush era, back in the early 2000s. OK, so and anyone that remembers that when you were paying, you know, for regular gas, you were spending six dollars, you know, for a gallon of gas. You know, so I mean, now the taxes are higher than they were before 20 years ago, 15 years ago. You know, so I mean, like all these things are going to hit very, very hard. And, and it's not just the United States. It's going to hit places like Japan. OK, like if you look at the U.S. dollar yen, they started to break out to the upside with this as oil is moving back. You know, remember I told you the oil trade was off the table a couple months ago up until yes. a couple weeks ago. I said, as we get back. Into, if we get to above 80 and towards that threshold as we go towards 100, which I'm telling you, we're going to 100, you know, I mean, so I mean, and this is going to have a big impact on the yen, the US dollar yen, even if the dollar is weak, the US dollar yen trade, I mean, I tell you, 116 is not far fetched anymore. If anything, 122 in the yen could very easily happen by the end of the year. If we see oil escalate, if it starts to really explode to the upside, where we go from 80 to say 90, 95, and we do hit this hundred dollar threshold, you realize that even if we have a 10 percent correction off that, that means oil will go from 100 to 90, bounce, find support, and then go higher. You know, so and that's going to have a ripple effect in the currency markets, and then you have your supply chain issues. You know, they're they're hard. I don't know if what it is like completely globally, but I read last week. You know, you have over five hundred thousand container ships crowding the ports of the United States. Houston being one of them. So the ability, even if we had cheaper oil and we could have it all flowing and whatever, the ability for oil to get to the refineries and move from one place to another and what have you is being restricted by all of these other ripple effects from these other things from the pandemic, you know. Sure. And and it's going to drive like the, I think the U.S. dollar Canada trade. That bear is coming back. You know, I see like I see definitely see the US dollar yen long term trending higher. US dollar Canada, we have a head and shoulders now that is formed on the daily basis, you know, and now we're treading looking to fall back down. As oil gets stronger, the can Canadian dollar will be strong versus the dollar. So it doesn't matter any we have d true divergence in the in the in the currency market. So where the US dollar is gonna be strong versus the yen, it's gonna be weak versus the Canada. And in, in, in a normal world, you'd be like, well, how does that happen? But this is not a normal world we're living in anymore, you know? And when you look at these conditions, something like commodity, a commodity such as oil, where I don't care how much we're coming off the oil nipple, um, 
all the heavy machinery is used, but we need it, you know? So, I so, mean, like, that's not changing anytime soon. You can't just flip yeah. a switch with this stuff, you know? Yeah. And I, I, I think the ripple effects are going to be big, you know? So, I yeah. mean, the, you make the a great Euro, argument. The Euro also, you know, remember back in the spring when the Euro was up at 122? I mean, everyone was arguing, oh, we're going to see the Euro at 135, 140. And I'm like, I don't know about that one with the oil train, <laughs> you know. And that, I mean, and I wasn't looking for it to necessarily, I never was very bearish the Euro, but I'm like, I don't know about being remotely bullish the Euro, you know. And now where we're at too, you see how... If you look at the dollar index, we know the major components is the euro and the pound, okay? The euro is making new lows. The pound isn't. It's trying to hold up because they're oil rich, you know? Okay. So, and it's going to have an impact. The U.S. dollar Swiss is getting strong once again, too, you know, because of these same dynamics. So, where you have the dollar strong against two European currencies, it has a trouble with the pound. And it's going to have trouble with the pound going really forward cool. for the you know so and i think the same thing is when you look at the australian dollar and new zealand dollar um you know it's because of restrictions and because of these other supply issues that they're not going to be able to get rid of their stuff i mean look at how what the what gold is doing you know and there's a move if you look at the interest rates how they're selling off right now you have this dynamic that you know the even the price of crude and the cost of carryover goes up as interest rates go up you know and that drives even more inflation which then you know all this stuff starts to become a domino effect where one chain starts to become four or five little loops you know how the dominoes spread out when you start with just one little row and they go out and these are the ripple effects you know we're coming on the 34 year cycle for fibonacci for the stock market crash of 87 you know october 17th <laughs> is just a week and a half away you know oh, so boy. and I think this perfect storm is here. You know, I think we are definitely in motion and we're going to have a wild, wild ride and we're going to see some big trends in the currencies. You know, but the it, dollar being It's pretty bear. cool. Just a giant, and I completely agree, man. And Kevin, we were talking about kicking off the program saying it's an awesome time to be a trader, man. And it seems <laughs> like it spans whether you're in futures, equities, Forex, Everything. commodities, my goodness, right? Yes. Um, and I agree with the way that, listen, we have a lot of supply disruptions, man. You see it across the board. I think we're going to see it all the time in these earnings coming up. And it's just so prevalent that I imagine it's going to take a year or two at a minimum to work sure. itself out when just like you talk about ships can't right. get into port man we got kids at home i'm thinking about starting shopping right now teddy and i'm not joking folks if you have kids out there year. man <laughs> yeah exactly get your products no now lie. because i'm not going to be waiting when everything is out and today like you said it's not a normal situation um and so even in my own mind you're making decisions right to plan for those types of disruptions right. um and then and it's like where do those ripple effects well, that, that's that, i was that, just going to say where do those ripple effects go right yeah, it's it's pretty cool, man. Teddy, we appreciate the conversation. Thanks, Tom. As always, man, you have a great week. We'll talk to you next Wednesday. All right, take care. Thanks, Teddy. Take care. Oil we'll be right back, folks. Baby. It's happening. Listen, I'm not stepping in front of that train. No way. Thanks, Teddy. We'll be <laughs> right back. Care.